Hello friends and welcome back to our class and today in module 2 we talk about trinomial function and let's get started then. The first thing that might come to your mind is about what is a function is. So for that I have got definition of function to you and from my second chapter relation function that is a function is a relation where no two distant objects can have the same first element. We are having doubt now how if this connected to trigonometric function then. It's connected because trigonometric function is also a circular function actually where we use unit circle for the ratio. So let's see, understand what this unit circle is and how we have to learn about it. In this section, basically what's important for you to remember is the trigonometric ratio. It is very simple, it has logical way to learn it, not memorize it just like that. And lastly, we have one important co concept here called sine of trigonometric function, which is a new concept for all of you. Uh, but it's very simple and very easy, trust me. And lastly, uh, of course, we also have domain and range of trigonometric functions. I'm going to cover not here, but in our section of trigonometric equations up in concept. So don't worry, we're going to cover over there because I feel like for to solve this kind of problems, you won't need this concept yet. So moving on to our chapter, fine then. So unit circle. So your first thing you must remember what the unit circle is. Okay, you know very well what a unit circle is. Unit circle is basically when the radius, okay, radius and the arc length, they both are equal. Forming a radian angle called one radian or so on, and that is a unit circle. Because all of these, the same things, a unit circle, yeah? The radius as well as this one is the same. Okay, now if I take, uh, let's say, one unit over here, with the radius one unit and if the arc is one unit, I can form a very nice shape as you can see here, a circle shape. Let's mark all the points. You have x o x dash, y o y dash. Okay. And let's take point A, B, A dash, B dash as they intersect on this um, axis. Okay, great. Moving on, you can find out the A is A1, comma zero, B is zero, comma one, and then A dash is minus one, comma zero. And b dash is 0, minus 1. Great. Now, what else can you observe from this given uh, diagram? I can observe and I've written it over here already. Let's say I'm starting my line or my angle from this initial position. So, if my line or the terminal side is, is standing on the initial itself, it's going to give me 0, isn't it? Giving a 0 angle or 0 degree. Simple as that, yes. Now, if it if it moves from this position, from this position to the perpendicular position like this perpendicular to the straight line, it is giving me a 90 degree, which also think about pi by 2. Similarly, if this moves on to forming a straight line like this, it gives me 180 degree or pi. And if it forms a reflex angle, as you have learned in a small class like this type, reflex angle, this whole thing is called reflex angle, giving it 273 pi by 2. And finally, I also have completion of the whole uh, circle to give me 2 pi or 36 degree. Very simple, you can see how it is named. Okay, clear? Yes. Fine then. Now, what else we have here? We have taken over here a point P, x comma y, and written P is uh, cos theta comma sin theta. Now, why have I written this one? If you look at the diagram carefully over here, you find I have taken this length to be x and this to be y because it's understood, yeah? x and y. And this would be 1, giving us x square plus y square is equal to 1. That's nothing but cos square theta, cos square theta plus x square theta is equal to 1. Always understand that in unit circle, we always have cosine value as x, that is going to be the first coordinate, and sine value as y, the second coordinate. And tangent will be y by x. Clear, yes. Now, there were three identities you have learned already last in class 10. These were these three identities, as you can see, very important. You had learned it very well, yes. But if you have forgotten, you just go through them one more time. But, um, Excluding this, you have going to learn some more of them, like around 40s of them this year, which are very simple. I'm going to teach you soon. So I hope so far you have understood the diagram, which I have explained to us now, what all important components. So my main aim here was just to introduce you with the new components, which I have marked over here, because we're going to be using it soon. And I have understood all this part so far. Okay, clear now. So I have done this. I have done this basically to, to make you sure to be able to write trigonometric ratios by yourself without memorizing it, without um, by hearting it. As moving on, so <clears throat> how to do it then? 
is very simple so first thing let's take number from by by 4 let's say 0 by 4 1 by 4 2 by 4 3 by 4 and 4 by 4 very simple okay now what would this would give me this would give me 0 itself because 0 by 4 is 0 itself 1 by 4 1 by 4 what by 4 gives you 1 by 2 because divided by 2 okay and like that way it gave me this much of answer clear now this much of ratio I want to go going to do root to them. When to root to them I'm gonna get zero, one by two, one by root two, root three by two and one. Very simple. Now why do I need this? Because these are basic the ratios of the given follow things. Moving on to the main page here. Okay. So here we have degree from zero to ninety six degree as you can see clearly. I'm reading uh, corresponding to all of them. And I told you to learn this one, isn't it? Yes, you have to rem remember this part. What is th 30 degree called in radian? What is 90 called in radian? And so on. Because it's going to help you a lot while solving problems. Trust me, so just learn them. It's very simple. As to a trick also for 30, it is going to be by 6 because and 60 by 3. You can remember how the trick looks like. So it's very simple. Let's learn them quickly. Fine then. Coming back to our ratio so whatever numbers we have arrived so far by doing the simple method just place this much of number over here itself to give you zero one by two one by root two three uh, root three by two and one so till 90 so leave this part for now so till 90 we have got the much of answers i'm covering this part of for now let's assume this part is not there so till 90 you have got the much of answer now for cause what you have to do is the same thing which i've got so far just keep it in the reverse manner you know reverse manner meaning one will be here rows 3 by 2 will be over here this is same over here over here and over here you can see how it's been replaced very simple just take this as it is and just put in a reverse manner as you can clearly see here now for tan for tan uh <coughs> for tan theta we're gonna do a division because as for you know tan is something but sine by cos so we're gonna divide them up to give you 0 by 1 is 0 1 by 2 divided by root 3 by 2 is 1 by root 3 and so on and you must be memorizing this by now because you have been using this uh, had been using this last year for your application trigonometric chapter where you had to apply tan theta everywhere to find out the length height and all those things so now, now how to know when it is not defined and what is defined for that I have given a small trick again to understand it very simply see 0 by anything give you 0 very simple like any number you have, you have anything under 0 will only give you 0 but if you have anything divided by 0 it will become not defined or infinity that's impossible to okay, all in simple terms and similar if you have anything under not defined will give you 0 now when do we use this when do we use this in case of quad as you can see it soon fine let's say for quad now quad I have mentioned it particularly because Seek and cos you can find by yourself is very simple. Just do one by uh, sine, one by cos. But for cot, you will make mistakes. So I have given it specifically to understand how it's been done. So one by zero is not defined as per our rule we have learned so far. And this will be th rule three, one, simple, simple. But this part here, yeah. there is this part. See, zero by not defined will be how much? Now because zero is any number, it's going to give you zero itself. Very simple. Okay, clear. This much part we understood how it's been derived and how it's been done. But what about 180, 270, 260? How to do for this part? Now to find out the value for this is we use our unit circle. It's given to us here. Let's have a look at it then again one more time. Find. And as, as for you remember, sine will give is the y value. Cos is the x value. Great. Moving on to sine first. What is 180? Come back to 180 over here. As you can see in 180, the y value is 0. So you can put a 0 over here. Very simple. Similarly, 270, 270 for sine. 270 is going to be y value is minus 1. So put minus 1 here. Similarly, 360 will come back to the same 0 position over here, which is 0. So put a 0 over here. Similarly, for cos also, cos 180 would be coming here, taking the x value, that's minus 1, great. And then 270 is got 0, great. And 260 is 1, great. And tan and cot, you know how to find out because tan is sine by cos and cot is 1 by tan. Very simple, okay. And I, I hope you understood how it's been done, how it's, everything is done. That's why I have defined before yourself the, this given circle to make you understand how we have got this answer. Okay. 
let's go through them one more time. They're going to move on to the next topic. Okay, so clear? Let's move on. Now, we also have a small part for general solution for formula, which I'm going to talk, uh, cover in our trigonometric equation topic, so I'll skip that for now. And moving on to my favorite and most interesting, I feel so, the sine of trigonometric function, because this is the main part where you can just play with the mind. You don't have to, like, you know, learn something specifically. So let's look through this diagram again and let's understand what is given to us in front of us. Moving on to sine of trigonometric functions. So as you can see, we have x, x dash uh, axis, y by the dash axis, and we have these two lines. Very clear? Yes. Now, what are these things? What are these supposed to be? Okay, let's understand calmly and quietly. <clears throat> now, this thing, let's have a look at it. As for you know, whenever we draw our axis like this way, x and y axis like this way, it divides the given section into four different quadrants. First quadrant, second quadrant, third and fourth quadrant, isn't it? And in each of the quadrant, you have some values for our trigonometric functions or some sign for them. Which means, in our first quadrant, all the trigonometric ratios are positive. All of them will have positive values. Now, to grade 10, you're just focusing on the first quadrant itself and nothing more or less than that. In our second quadrant, we have sine and cos, cosec are positive, all or they are negative. In our third quadrant, tan and cot are positive, all or they are negative. And so in our fourth quadrant, cos and sec are positive, all or they are negative. Now why do we need to talk about this? Because this helps us determine the sign of the uh, <coughs> given trigonometric function as well as find the value for them. Great. Okay, now this you understood, but how to remember them? It's a very shortcut way to remember them. We have, it's called after school to college. After means uh, all trigonometric ratios are positive. School means sine and cosec are positive. It's just for cosec. Two means tan and cot are positive. And college means cos and sec are positive. So remember, if sine is positive, it's reciprocal, or cos is also positive, and like that goes on. Hope you understood this concept so far. Moving on to talking about our this thing mentioned in red color, or what that's supposed to be. Let's understand more clearly. This line defines 0 degree and 360. And this defines 90 degree, this 180, and this 270. So we have to mention an angle theta in the first quadrant. How to define it? I define the angle to be less than 90, but more than 360 if the angle goes beyond that, isn't it? Because there's some angles when what happens is after you take one complete round, again the angle go again one more round. Let's say I took one complete round of one angle, it going again more. So for that you can't form other quadrant. The angle will continue getting a thing within this four quadrants. It goes in playing like this way only. For two dimension, understand the point. For two dimension, that is x and y. It's a plane. Yeah? For three times when you have z also like this, we have z also like this, say perpendicular. In such case, the matter becomes different. But for now, to our point, understand that when you have two planes like this, same, if the angles become more than 360 degree, it goes on revolving in this format only. So for that, we have 360 plus theta. So first quadrant, the angle would be 90 minus theta less than 90 or 360 plus theta, it's more than 360 degree. For second quadrant, similarly, we're going to have angle to be more than 90, so 90 plus theta, but less than 180, so 180 minus theta. Similarly, third quadrant, the angle would be 180 plus theta because more than 180, but less than 270 to give it 270 minus theta. And lastly, 270 plus theta because more than 270, but less than 360 degrees, this is minus theta. So hope you understood the whole structure of this. Fantastic, great. That's the first thing to remember or to learn in our standard trigonometric functions. So, we'll take for that. Great. The second we have is a very simple and very small rule to talk about. That is, when does uh, the given trigonometric uh, ratio or I mean function the change? When do they change from each other? That is for a given way. So you can understand this more better when you have applications for your proof analysis. Learn them up so you know what is it. When you have 90 and 270, it, it changes. It changes the what? Sine to cos, cos to sine, tan to cot, cot to tan, cosec to sec and sec to cosec. Okay. Now how to remember this? Because most of us get confused because you know the sine reciprocal is cosec, so we make it the other way around. Not the this way around, yeah? To remember them, just add co to in front. That is, if you have sine, adding co give you cos. If you have tan, adding co give you cot. If you have sec, 
adding Kogi with Kosi. That's how I remember it. Great. But if you have 180 60, there is no change at all. That is, if you have this angle, there is no change. Sine becomes sine, cos becomes cos, and goes on. There is no change at all. Fine. Second rule understood very well. So when 90 or 270 changes, same. 180 to 60, there is no changes. There. So moving on to third important thing when angle or when theta is negative, then what happens then? When I say angle becomes negative, how do you remember the negative angle we talk about? A negative angle, it goes in clockwise direction. And clockwise, as I've talked to you in the using my watch, that clockwise, when I say clockwise, I meant to say, let's focus on this clock. I meant to say in this direction, as you can see clearly. I'm going in this direction, isn't it? Clockwise give us what? Give us negative angle. Great. So let's see it here. Fine then. <clears throat> so in this thing, when I say clockwise, I mean to say it goes in this direction, giving to us to form here like this way, a negative angle. Great. So when an angle is negative, in such case, what happens? In such case, cos minus theta is cos theta, sine minus theta is minus sine theta, tan minus theta is minus tan theta, sec minus theta is min uh, cos sec theta. Sorry. Cosic minus theta is minus cosic theta and cot minus theta is minus cot theta. If we observe it carefully, you find that except cos and sec, all other angles uh, take out negative outside. Except cos and sec. Now why so? If you observe carefully, you just now learn that in the fourth quadrant, cos and sec are positive and all other negative. So whenever an angle is formed in the clockwise, the first thing it enters in the fourth quadrant, isn't it? Yes. So whatever angle is formed, it's going to be negative. But because it is the fourth quadrant, so cos and sig becomes positive, or other becomes negative. That's the only reason behind it. So hope you've understood very clearly what I meant to say. That is, when you move in a clockwise direction, the first quadrant you enter is fourth quadrant, where you, ha where you have cos and sig as positive, so all other become negative, but cos and sig becomes positive. So to understand this clearly, you can take that cos and sig, they observe. They observe the minus negative from them, whereas sine and tan and other things, they bring out, they give out the negative outside. That's it. Hope you understand. Moving to the next part now. So this whole concept so far is a very important concept because it can be used in this in our problem solving. And not only do you have to know it if you understand the basic of trigonometric function also. I told you it was very simple and I hope you have found this simple as I have ta taught you. So with this moving on to the application of it, like how it's being used in very simple terms. Let's move on. So here we go, the all of the thing. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, it's using the thought we have learned so far, it's applying based on that. Now if you see over here, you'll find that this portion, like from here, the second part, this whole thing, the six of them, was the only thing you have learned last year. Remember it? Yes. But that time you just learned it as you didn't need the reason behind it. But now you need the reason behind it, how it is like that way. Because 90 minus theta is in the first quadrant and everything is positive in it. And 90 minus theta you have a change. And that's how it's changing. That's how we, the reason behind it, do you know it by now? Very good. So let's see. Let's just go through. I just want it to take some time. Just go through all of this by yourself. Just understand them how it's been. I can tell you with my words. So let's see you now. The first one is the same thing we have done in before. So same thing. Second one, you have told the reason behind this. The third one, if you see, is 90 plus theta. So tell me, if you assume again the quadrant like this way, it belongs to the second quadrant, isn't it? Because second quadrant has 90 plus theta. So the second quadrant, only sine and cosec are positive or other negative because of which uh, you can see only plus is only in the sine and cosec or other negative sign you have shown. And second thing, because it's 90 degree, it's going to change. It's going to change from sine to cos, cos to sine, tan to cot, cot to tan, cos to cos, uh, cosec, sorry, sorry, sec to cosec and cos to cosec, cosec to sec. So that's how they have changed. So you can see how it's been done. Very simple, yeah? And in the fourth one, it's 180 minus theta. Again, the second quadrant again, which means sine and cosec are positive or are they negative. So this basically means to say that we can have plus for this both, negative for all of them. And second thing again, because one it there can be no change. So whatever it is, is going to be same, same. You can see how it is. Yeah, same, same, same. The fifth one we have is sine. 
180 plus theta means third quadrant and third only tan and quarter positive all of the negative so you can see only plus for these both and negative for all of these and because 180 there can be no change so you can be as it is so you can see sine is sine cos is cos tan is tan and like that way clear yes six one we have 270 minus it again the third quadrant where you have tan and cot to be positive all of the negative as you can see clearly and second thing was 270 can be a change change from what listen carefully now sine to cos cos to sine okay and cosec to sec and sec to cosec tan to cot and cot to tan very simple guys very easy to understand everything is simple yeah and lastly seventh we also have eighth one which i mentioned over here to make it more confusing for you to understand but it's the same thing and lastly when you have 360 minus it is a fourth quadrant where cos and sec are positive or the negative and because 360 there can be no change so it can be same as it is but this much so you have to understand very simple okay let's go through one more time if you have make it very clear and make it perfectly better so that's it for this concept and even this is there we're going to explain the next module about the equation in that module but for now moving on to problems is very simple guys it's what we have learned so far the same concept the same things apply that's it okay so basically in this section i as you can see friends they have uh, asked question in two base one thing is to find out the old arithmetic function as you can read it out here 